all good morning. It's good to see your beautiful faces today. I feel a little bit like a substitute teacher today. I've never felt that before. I honestly thought about this weekend, uh, maybe just playing a movie. That took a minute there. That took a minute. Ultimately decided that uh, I might not have a job in the morning, so decided to... We'll preach the word today. Um, also wanted to just notice someone real quick. He's going to hate me for doing this. But my brother, Andrew Matrone, is here with us today from Florida. Um, if you were here about 20 or 25 years ago, you would have, uh, he would have been the other one that was wreaking havoc in the hallways um, in this sacred building. Yeah, so he and I. So it's uh, great to be able to have this opportunity again to speak to you all. Um, obviously a little bit of short notice, but I'm going to do my best to preach the word today and to bring a sermon that I know was on Pastor Jim's heart. We were able to talk quite a bit over the weekend, and I think it's going to be great. It is a great opportunity today to speak to you. Um, if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, we've been going through this series, Faith That Moves Us Forward. Um, we're looking at Hebrews 11, and Hebrews 11 is sometimes thought of as like the hall of faith, right? Um, it's about these just amazing people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, um, and talks about their faith and what God did through their immense faith. And we got to have faith, right? We're going to continue on the series and talk about Enoch here in a little bit, but I, I first, I felt the Lord lay something on my heart this weekend as I was preparing. As we're going through this this series, and as we're reading through Hebrews 11, I have just one little bit of concern in my heart and a little bit of conviction in my heart. You know, when you talk about these amazing people in the Old Testament, sometimes I think we get a little bit too enthralled with who they are. Now, they did great things, and God did great through, things through their faith, but sometimes it, it, we get so enthralled that what they did seems out of reach for us right? And when we do this, it can cause us to look at the faith they had as something that is just out of reach. Maybe they're just different from us. They had different challenges. They, they lived in a different context. And, and because of that, of course, they were able to go and have the faith and do the things that they were able to do. But the problem is, if this is our perspective, we really miss the entire point of what this chapter is trying to tell us. Because the point is, this life of faith is actually normal for the people of God. This life of faith is normal for the people of God. Our anchor verse for this series is Hebrews 10, verse 39, which is the, the last verse of the, the previous chapter. It says this, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are served. So we don't belong to those that shrink back and are destroyed. We don't belong to those that shrink back when, when, when faced with adversity or, or faced with challenges or, or, or faced with spiritual battles. We have faith that moves us forward into those things because we know God has it. So yes, it recalls the great stories of faith of some very famous Old Testament people, but it's not only for the extraordinary it's the life each and every one of us is called to today. No matter your struggles, no matter your hangups, no matter your, the, the inadequacies that you feel that you bring to the table, no matter any of those things, God has called you to live boldly by faith today. Amen. So I want to start this morning just by praying over you because there may be some in the room today that feel inadequate that feel that they have disqualifications today to live by faith, to live boldly in your faith. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for this opportunity to be around your word, Lord Jesus, as, as a corporate church family. Lord God, and I do pray for the person in the room. I pray for me right now that, that, that comes into this with, with inadequacies and things that I feel like are disqualifying me to live like these people lived, Lord Jesus. But we know, God, that, that through you and through your strength and as we live close to you, that God, our faith can carry us forward. 
Pray, God, that you would speak to us in, the, in some special ways today. In your precious name, amen. Amen. All right, that got a little serious. Shake it off. It's all right. Shake it off. Do you guys remember those uh, Rapture series movies? <laughs> like in the 70s? Not, not like Left Behind, but like the 70s. Now, I'm not from the 70s, as you can see. Um, but, like, for some reason, even in the 90s, they were showing these films to kids to scare us into being believers, right? And these things were, were terrifying. I know our youth students have no idea what these are, because we wouldn't show these to you today. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> we wouldn't do that to you. But it was like Christian film, like corny Christian film meets 70s horror movie. Like, that's... <laughs> That's really what it was. And these things were absolutely terrifying. And I remember watching these and then for literally years being terrified to go to sleep because I knew that the next morning I was going to wake up, my family was going to be gone, and my friends were going to be gone because I lied to my parents the day before or whatever other stupid thing I did as a child, you know, that was going to keep me out of heaven somehow. I mean, this is the way that I lived for so long. And it's actually, I look back, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. I spent so much time being terrified of being raptured. But the weird part was, and I kind of want to talk to the producers of this, these, these films, because I was, I was terrified of missing the rapture. But you know what I was also afraid of? Being raptured. I was so scared. I didn't know what that meant. What, 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 I don't want to be taken from this. I actually like my life as an eight-year-old boy on this earth. Like, I don't need to be raptured. I'm good. So I was really, I was scared either way. I tell that story not because it really connects to much today. Um, other than the fact that today we are going to talk about a guy named Enoch. And as we'll see, Enoch is only one of two people that faced one of these fears. Um, he, was, he was taken from the earth without dying. And we'll read about it here in Hebrews 11, verse 5. It says, By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. There's that by faith statement that we keep seeing over and over, um, Hebrews 11. And this is what we're called to, by faith. And that, I hope that by the end of this, we start, we start putting ourselves in this story, that by faith, we will go and do the things that God has called us to do. By faith, you will do what God has called you to do. And the actual story goes like this. Back in Genesis chapter 5, it says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah, who was the oldest living man that we know of. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. And it goes on to say, Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. So that's pretty much all we get about this guy. I mean, I've pretty much read every bit of scripture there is to, that, that talks about Enoch. So we don't know much, but we know two things. We know two things. Number one, we knew that he grew old and never died, right? And number two, we know that, that by faith, Enoch walked closely with God. And this is mentioned twice in just a matter of a couple little sentences. So when we see this in Scripture, when we see this in the Bible, things that are mentioned twice in a very short period of time it should perk our ears. We should, we should know. We need to study that a little more. We need to go deeper, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. That's our focus, walking closely with God. In Colossians 3, it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Now, this is an important verse for us because if you've given your life to Jesus, this means you've died to your old sinful self and all the nature 
that comes with that. You've been raised anew with Christ. So now what? Now what does that mean? So then we set our hearts and our minds on things above, not on earthly things. So the things we used to be concerned about, the earthly things like power, greed, success, money, all those, those sort of things, those go away and our, our, our concern becomes the things above. And I want you to ask yourself a question, and this may seem like an odd question today, and it's something I've been asking myself this week, is how would you live if you believed absolutely in God's existence? How would you live if you believed with all your heart that he exists and your whole entire life depends on it? Well, you're probably saying, well, Pastor Anthony, I, I do believe that. I, I do believe completely that God exists and that he sent his son to save me from, from, from my sins. Yes, I believe that wholeheartedly. So then maybe we need to kind of flip the question around. And instead of asking that, maybe we ask, how would you live differently if you did not believe? What would the difference be? Would you look much different than your unbelieving neighbor? Because listen, there are some unbelievers out there that live far moral lives than some, some Christians we may know. But this isn't about the appearance of living morally or a list of do's and don'ts. It's about setting your mind and your affections on the earthly things above and walking closely with Jesus. So the question then is, are you walking closely with him? We need to stay close to God as Enoch did. Like our lives depend on it. Like there's nothing else that matters that goes before that. So two ways I wanna talk about staying close to Jesus today. Number one, we need to stay close to Jesus as a church family. So this is, a we, this is the we portion, all of us together right now. Because our mission at Central Assembly goes like this. We want to connect people to God, to others, and to their purpose in life. And we do this by providing Sunday morning services and other activities uh, to, to connect with God corporately. We do this by providing a strong group life so that you can connect with, with others around the church and, and, provi- and, and make deep, long-lasting connections. And we do this by providing opportunities for you to, to live out your purpose and your calling, both inside and outside the walls of the church. But as a church, in our attempt to live out this mission, we have to do it in a way that keeps us close to Jesus so that he can take us deeper. So then in our focus on praise, let's not forget about prayer. So let's talk about praise for a moment. I think we, we know how to do this right, don't we? We know how to come to church and worship the Lord together corporately. I love every Sunday morning. I missed the last two Sundays and I hated it because I love sitting right on the front row, raising my hands and worshiping the Lord with my church family. There's nothing better than that. And I know you all love to do that. We do this so, so well. I love blasting worship music in my car. I'm on my way to work. I love, we, we, we always have worship music playing in our, in our house. We know how to praise We know how to do this. But when we focus on praise and worship so much that we forget prayer, we're really not allowing God to take us deeper. We kind of stay up on the surface because we know how to sing, right? But at times, we lose the ability to intercede, to really take the time to focus our hearts and our minds on Jesus and intercede as a church family and I think we actually do this pretty well. I mean, we, we have a lot of opportunities, even during our services, to, to pray with one another, and, and we'll be able to do that later today. And, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays during, our, during the noon hour, we have prayer, corporate prayer. And on Wednesday nights before church, we have corporate prayer. So we have plenty of opportunities to be able to do this. It just needs to be a priority that each of us bring. Let's focus on prayer In our focus on events, let's not forget about relationships. There's another thing churches are great at, events, right? We know how to throw a party all the time. Every Sunday morning, we're throwing an an event right here that has been planned, and we we get to be together. We throw throw events throughout the week, and we throw events all throughout the year, church-wide sorts of things. We're good at this, but we can't forget why these events are happening Because yes, we want to connect closer to Jesus, but one way to do that is by connecting closer to one another. 
So when we're together, we mean to make it a priority to connect on a deep level. We talk about this as a church staff all the time. When we're planning an event, uh, the goal isn't entertainment. The goal isn't, isn't to entertain. The goal is to create an atmosphere, a foundation, sort of a jumping off place for us to build relationships with one another. That's the important part. So we need to gather, but in gathering, let's not be shallow. Let's go deep with one another. And that means, you know, on Sunday morning, not just saying hi in the lobby, but asking about each other's week. And then ask another question as a follow-up. And then ask if I can pray for you this week. What, what are some things I can pray over you? And then next Sunday when you see the person again, asking how things are going now. Deepening those relationships. Because relationships need to be a priority if we want to stay close to the heart of Jesus as a church family. And in our focus on blessings, let's not forget mission. Man, in our church culture today, there is a heavy, heavy emphasis on blessings. How is the Lord blessing me today? And that when we're blessed, it's almost like it's a sign. That's the sign that we're close to Jesus. And we get so caught up in the blessings being that metric. And yes, God wants to bless you. I believe that. But what about when life is hard? What about when life is throwing you circumstances that you never thought you'd have to deal with? I know there are people in this room dealing with difficult, difficult journeys right now. Does that mean they're less close to Jesus? I don't think so. So the emphasis can't just be on blessings. It must be on mission. Because God, yes, wants to bless you. But when we're on mission, we remember that Jesus came to save the lost and gave us that exact same mission to go and make disciples. We've got to be on mission as a church. That is our metric. Are we on mission? So the, the list on the left is good. Those, are, those aren't things that we ignore. We need to be praising the Lord, giving him all of our adoration. We, we need events. We need gatherings. We, we, need, we need blessings from the Lord. Those are very important things. But when we leave out the right side, we just become shallow as a church. And I know you, I know you that come here every week, you don't want to be a shallow church. You don't come to Central Assembly because you want to be part of a shallow church. So we need to bring that, that right side in all together, and we can go deep and, and, and allow the Lord to take us deeper. So the second thing here is staying close to Jesus ourselves. So staying close as a church family and staying close to Jesus our, ourselves. You have to take responsibility for your own spiritual growth. Ultimately, it is completely on us as individuals to grow spiritually. There isn't a pastor, a mentor, a parent, a friend that can do your spiritual growing for you. It's 100% on you. And your church family is here to train you, encourage you, support you in every single way. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to you to stay close to Jesus. In 2 Peter 3.18, it says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, we all receive God's grace when, when we come into relationship with the Lord. We all receive that grace. But we need to continue to grow in his grace. See, we're all sort of on this grace journey, you might call it. It's, it's about an active engagement that we have to be constantly Involved. And Jesus says to his disciples, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's active engagement there. We have to seek his kingdom. Paul tells the Philippians, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And God is our source of transformation, don't get me wrong there, but we play an important role, a vital role, to allow the Lord to grow us. And we do this by reading scripture. We do this by studying the Bible. Men, I've been talking to you about it in my email for the last month. If you're not getting the balancing act, men, you need to get the balancing act. We've been talking about scripture reading and the importance of daily scripture reading. We're gonna do that in the men's breakfast as well because it is, if without that, 
without that, God cannot grow us deeper. He, he needs us to be in his word. And we need to be sending, spending serious time in prayer. Like we do it corporately, we need to be doing it individually, spending time in prayer, deepening our relationship with him. This is how we grow and we work out our salvation. We take responsibility for our own spiritual growth to stay close to Jesus. And to stay close to Jesus ourselves, we practice and treasure the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians says, God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So before anything else, we're called to a relationship with Christ. Before any other part of your life comes into play, you're called to follow Jesus. And to be in fellowship with him every single day. And everything else gets to flow from that. Every other part of your life can flow from the fellowship you have with Jesus. It's not just another item on the checklist. Oh, I got to read today, read the Bible. I I, I prayed today. I went to church this week. I, I, I went to my life group this week. All those are great things you need and you need to do it. But it's not a checklist. This is constant fellowship with Jesus. I'd like the worship team to make their way up. Almost every Sunday morning, you'll hear Pastor Jim give this blessing to us. And some of you could probably just repeat it back to me. It says, it's in first, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 14. And I actually want to read it together, if you don't mind. Read it out loud together. And as you read it, let it be a blessing to those around you. Let's read. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, as we walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we need to remember these four things. That obedience is our love language to God. You heard Pastor Jim talk about this last week. We were looking at uh, Cain and Abel. He said, we don't reduce faith to feelings. We can't reduce our faith to just how we feel about God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. That's the love that Jesus is looking for, obedience. It's more than the feelings, but are we going to obey him? Pastor Jim talked about this as surrender. This is just surrendering our lives to him. We're obedient. It's your will, not mine, Lord. I want to obey you, Jesus. And through our obedience to him, we draw draw closer in relationship to him. Number two, everything is done as an act of worship. Everything we do all day, this is how we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not just singing songs and listening to a sermon on Sunday morning. It's every day, and everything that we do is an act of worship. So if you stay at home with kids, it's an act of worship to to change diapers and to to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and to to discipline your children. That's an act of worship. If you're an educator, it's an act of worship to to, to make lesson plans and and to mold young minds. If, If whatever it is that you do should be done as an act of worship to the Lord. Number three, gratefulness is the fragrance of our lives. This is just being more aware of the presence of God. I like to, um, a lot of days, as if I'm sitting in my office for a while, I get up. If it's a nice day, I'll walk around outside. If it's not, I'll walk inside the building. But I call them my gratitude walks. And they're just walking and just being grateful. Being grateful for uh, who God is, number one, and all the things that he's, that he's offered me and give the responsibilities he's given me and the opportunities that he's given me and everything that I have, just being grateful because I think we tend to focus on the things we don't have at times. And so this is just kind of a reset of just, just gratefulness. It helps to ground us and remember how blessed we all are regardless of our circumstances. If God did, didn't do one more thing for me the rest of my life, I am blessed beyond measure. And fourth, prayer is more than merely a shopping list. 
Prayer can be a time of just being with him. Not, not asking, but just worship, communion, adoring. Again, gratitude, gratefulness, fellowshipping with God instead of going through that shopping list of items. And yes, he wants to know what we're going through and he, he, he wants to help us and bless us and, and do all those things. But is it a relationship if we're just constantly, Lord, can you do this? Can you do that? No, it's a two-way street. We, we want to sit with him as we would a friend spending time together with God, not just demanding things of him. In the next verse in, in, in Hebrews 10, verse six, or Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. See, this example of Enoch's life rests on the importance of our posture. He was taken out of this world by God without experiencing death. Why? Because his life, he was, in his life, he was commended as one who pleased God. He brought God pleasure through walking closely with him. So as we take the next 15 minutes or so to worship, let's, let this also be our posture. Let's stay close to Jesus as a church family, praying and interceding today and throughout our week, building each other up in relationship with one another. Let's, let's challenge ourselves to just go a little bit deeper with one another and being on mission together. Let's also stay close to Jesus as individuals, taking responsibility. It's all on us as individuals to, to grow in relationship with the Lord and learn to just treasure the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again. That we can come to you, Lord Jesus, we can commune with you, Lord. Lord, forgive us for when we treat you just as, as a shopping list or we treat your relationship with us as just something, whatever we can get out of it, Lord. Lord God, forgive us of that. Help us, Jesus, to be better than that, to, to want a relationship with you, to, to treasure our fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray one more time for, for anybody in the room that just feels too inadequate. They, they still feel, Lord, I, I, I can't do this because I'm not like those people that had such great faith. Lord, strengthen us. We love you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us this morning? I'm just going to take a few moments here before we engage the entire band, just to sing a few intimate songs. Just believe uh, during this time that the Lord wants to meet us here. He wants to meet you here this morning. So as we lift these choruses, just to encourage you to lift your voice to just, uh, just as Anthony has said, we, want, we long uh, for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, God to connect, and we wanna walk deeply with the Lord. Could you sing this with me? And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Come on, lift that again. He walks.
church he does today this morning. Church, we 
for someone this morning through times of doubt through times of fear through struggle and pain and circumstances beyond our control when we don't feel your blessing God you're still there you're still with us deep in our connection with you Lord. deep in our connection with you I'll just take a moment to allow him to speak and just the silence of this room is just piano and cello play. Just allow God to speak to you. Jesus, sweet spirit, come and have your way. First Corinthians 12 and 14, we see the moving and giftings of his spirit. I believe that's a word just to speaking into what God is doing and saying he longs to be with us. He longs to speak and to talk. What I opened up with, he longs to meet with us. We, we serve a personal God. We serve a personal God who longs to speak and communicate. And uh, we're going to invite our prayer team forward as we sing another song. And 
and to just kind of begin to wrap our service up. But this, the altar team is going to come and um, just believe if you have a need here in the room or online, uh, they are here to connect. There's a button on our online chat that you can click and a pastor will pray with you. But God, long, he, he's longing to speak and meet with us this morning. And maybe you want to come and kneel at the altar. Maybe you want to kneel at your seat. Don't feel like you have to stand through this moment, but just uh, connect with the Lord and let him allow, give him place to meet with you this morning as we continue to sing and worship. Thank you, Lord, you meet us here. You meet us here. Jesus. What a gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy. steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and
we just desire, our heart's desire is to grow closer to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, and as we do that, I, as your word says, just draw closer to us, Lord Jesus, as individuals, but also as a church family, Lord. Thank you for this group of people that wants, doesn't want to remain shallow, but wants to grow deeper with you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're going to grant us that because that's our heart's desire. Lord, we know that that's your desire to be close to us. God, help us to fellowship with you in our, in our obedience, in our worship to you, Lord Jesus, in our connection with others, Lord God. Go before us this week. Remind us of these truths every single day when we wake up in the morning, that you are the first thing on our mind, Lord God, to fellowship with you. Draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I am so thankful to be a part of a church family that desires more of him. And thank you for being here today. I pray, God, that we we'll just bless you the rest of your day and the rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next Sunday. God bless. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain.